Phil Kishke, and today I'll be talking about our paper, Massively Multilingual Document Alignment with Cross-Lingual Sentence Movers Distance. So jumping right into the motivation. Uh, the main motivation is cross-lingual natural language processing. Um, and the main reason for it is there is a scarcity of parallel data. That is data that uh, is in two different languages that mean the same things. Uh, as we all know, the web contains lots of monolingual text, but this cross-lingual parallel data is much rarer. And the reason for that is it requires bilingual human annotators to create, uh, which are, of course, very difficult and expensive to uh, source. But despite its scarcity, parallel data plays a crucial role in a variety of NLP tasks. Uh, for example, machine translation, as well as cross-lingual dense representations. Our main motivation in this case is actually machine translation, where, as we show here, more data is always better. For machine translation, the biggest improvement uh, that experiments have shown time and time again uh, in quality comes from more training data. Uh, there's a quote by Eric Brill, don't think about algorithms, get more data. If you want to think, think about getting more data. And as we can see in the figure to the right, uh, as you increase the amount of parallel cross-lingual data, your machine translation model gradually improves. Uh, we'd also like to highlight that within machine translation, uh, more data is particularly valuable for low resource machine translation. Um, as the graph on the right shows, while there's a lot of parallel text for high resource language pairs, such as English to German and English to French, there's actually quite little available for low resource pairs, languages that you don't see used as commonly as English and other high resource languages. Um, and naturally, this leads to very poor translation for low resource language pairs. So if we are able to automatically sort of obtain extra parallel data for these lower resource uh, directions, we can improve the overall quality of models. Uh, the final motivation we'll talk about today is language agnostic NLP. Uh, and in this case, uh, one classic example of it is multilingual hate speech detection. Um, well, naturally, people usually uh, train a classifier to try to detect something like this. Um, one natural approach using cross-lingual NLP would be to annotate an English corpus, since English annotators might be more readily available, train a classifier, but in this case, use language-independent representations of the input of the text. Uh, of course, this language-independent representation needs to be trained once again on parallel data. Suddenly, when you train it on this English corpus using this language independent representation, your classifier can work across all the languages for which you have parallel data. So as I mentioned before, this parallel data is very difficult to obtain. Uh, but there's one caveat. Translation is actually a very common human activity. It's a billion dollar industry that localizes products in their documentation, makes information accessible in many languages, um, there's lots of books that are translated, TV shows, movies, etc. So as researchers, we don't actually need to create this data, we actually just need to find it. So as I mentioned before, machine translation is one of our main motives. And uh, within the machine translation pipeline for obtaining parallel data automatically, um, generally these start off with some large corpus that's multilingual. They perform language identification, and then some sort of cross-lingual document retrieval, these document level parallel data. And then of course, this is then filtered into, uh, segmented into sentence level parallel data, then filtered. And today, we're primarily gonna talk about the task of uh, cross-lingual document retrieval, or also known as cross-lingual document alignment. So the question is here, can we perform cross-lingual document alignment using solely the document content? Uh, that is, can you understand that one document is a translation of another just by looking at the content of a document? Before we jump right in, I want to introduce uh, the main tool we use in this work. Um, and these are multilingual sentence representations, particularly laser. Uh, so the idea behind laser is uh, it's a set of uh, 93 languages uh, where an encoder-decoder model based on a sent uh, an LSTM has been trained to uh, translate sentences from a variety of sources using a single model. Uh, and when you take the representation from the encoder, uh, you notice some interesting aspects. Two sentences that are in different languages 
that mean the same thing as in our translations to each other will be fairly close in the embedding space. Um, and for the rest of this paper, we build upon these laser sentence representations in a way that allows us to find documents that are parallel. So our main solution to this is the cross-lingual sentence mover's distance. Um, the main idea behind it is uh, creating fixed length representations of an entire document uh, sort of ignores the fact that documents are variable lengths. Some documents are longer. It's harder to encode all this information in a single vector. Some documents can be short. They might be easier to encode. Uh, additionally, averaging sentences, the embeddings of sentences to form a document representation means that every sentence is valued equally. But we know that some sentences probably have more semantic information and importance to the meaning of a document than others. Uh, so in this case, we propose the idea that how well sentences match up between two documents in different languages is a very good signal for whether these two documents are translation. And that's where we introduce cross-lingual sentence movers distance to compute this. So jumping back, what is uh, sentence movers distance based off, based off of? Uh, it's actually based off of a well-known metric called the earth movers distance, uh, which is a distance metric between two probability distributions over some region D. And uh, if you actually interpret it as a uh, as two uh, each distribution as like a way of piling up dirt in a space, then the earth mover's distance is just the minimum cost of turning one pile of dirt, which is one distribution, into another pile of dirt, the second distribution. So that's the minimum distance between the two. Um, and of course, if you look at it from like a, uh, a metric point of view, the cost is just the amount of dirt moved multiplied by the distance that the dirt is moved. So here we can look at two different distributions, uh, a red distribution and a blue distribution. Um, each point in this distribution has certain mass, which you can equate with probability mass. And the goal here is just to find the shortest distances that mass can be moved to sort of take the dirt from the red distribution and sort of fill up the blue holes, the second distribution. Of course, you can't put more dirt than a hole can contain, and like vice versa. Um, if a hole is too big, uh, you can't, you have to fill it up all the way. So how do we actually take this, this distance metric and apply it to our task? Um, well, we can take a document and turn it into a distribution over sentences. Uh, the most classic distribution is just a multinomial distribution, a uh, discrete distribution over the sentences, where we just do a normalized bag of sentence approach. And then the Euclidean distance is a very natural distance between sentences in the source document and target document because we use Euclidean distance all the time, actually. Um, so how do we actually identify the distance between two sentences? That's where laser comes in from before. The laser embedding can get us a real value dense vector for each sentence. Whereas I mentioned before, if two sentences are semantically similar, they're closer in this laser space. So you can easily compute the Euclidean distance between the sentences in document one as seen on the left, as well as the sentences in document two as seen on the right. Find the minimum amount of movement from sentences in document one to sentences in document two. But we believe that, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, certain sentences are more important than others. Uh, as I mentioned, we assign probability mass to each sentence, but what if we assign this mass based on how well we view a sentence as being important or not? We propose four different weighting schemes here. Uniform weighting, where each sentence is equally weighted. Sentence length weighting, where, each, where longer sentences are weighted more than shorter sentences. Inverse document frequency, where more frequent sentences are weighted less than rare sentences. And finally, SLIDF, combining sentence length and inverted document frequency. These are all weighting schemes that are very reminiscent of weighting schemes used in information retrieval literature. Finally, after weighting each sentence, we turn it into a distribution just by normalizing all the weights in a document. So that way, the sum of all the probability mass of each sentence in a document equals one. And then we need to figure out how to optimally move the probability mass from one document to the one in the other language. Um, so fortunately, there's an optimal transport formulation here uh, where we seek to move probability mass from one area to the other, such that you can uh, all probability mass must be moved from one to the other 
and each, um, I guess, hole in this case can only take as much as it can fill. Um, this is the formulation. Uh, you can go into more detail in the paper, of course. But to solve this optimal transport problem, it's of cubic complexity, which means that it can be very slow for long documents. Uh, to address this, we propose an approximation called the greedy mover's distance, which simply finds the two closest sentences and moves as much mass between the two sentences as possible. One sentence in the source document, one sentence in the target document. It then goes to the next two closest pairs and just keeps moving as much mass as possible between them uh, as viable under the constraints and terminates when all mass has been moved between the source document and target documents. Uh, all constraints are maintained, but the transportation in this case is not optimal. So it's an upper bound on the true earth mover's distance. Uh, but this one is much faster. It's actually O of n squared log n complexity, where n is the number of sentences in a document. So how well does this um, approximation perform compared to the original earth mover's distance? So this greedy approximation uh, has about 98% Kendall tau with the exact. Um, which means that generally the ordering produced by the uh, sentences between the distances is actually very similar to the ordering introduced by the exact computation. Uh, as we can see, the recall from testing on a small subset of test set with our document alignment task is pretty similar, and the mean absolute error is actually pretty close to zero, which means that it's very close to the exact. It's a pretty tight upper bound. Uh, from the literature, we also have a relaxed approximation that gets rid of one of the constraints. Uh, this is fairly fast, but as we see here, it doesn't provide similar distances to the exact method, as well, in comparison to our method, uh, which we can actually verify here. Uh, the greedy sentence movers is uh, in green, so it's an upper bound, but it's pretty close to the exact computation, while the relaxed one that's seen in the literature is a little bit tighter. It's a looser, uh, sorry, it's a looser lower bound. Once again, once we find these distances between source and target documents, we now have a, a scoring function between each pair of documents. Uh, from there, we can induce a one-to-one -one alignment between a source document set and a target document set via greedy algorithm, which we describe in the paper. How do we evaluate our performance though? Uh, looking at the web, you can actually find many cases of documents uh, where you can identify the language in the document both through a language identifier classifier, but also looking at the URLs. Uh, in certain cases, the URL uh, identifier can be switched out and replaced, indicating that uh, one web page is actually a translation of another. And we use a test set created using this URL uh, heuristic to evaluate our methods, uh, which we provide a link to in the paper. What are some baselines we compare against? We compare against the direct embedding baseline where we embed the entire content of a document with laser, and then the other one where we embed each sentence in a document with laser and average all the sentence embeddings to create a document representation. Um, with these cross-single representations, we take the similarity between the cosine similarity between documents as a scoring function to guide our one-to-one -one alignment process. And how does it perform? Well, um, we see here that our weighting schemes uh, actually outperform these two baselines, all of them generally. Um, but we see that sentence length and the inverse document frequency greatly improve upon just using the sentence mover's distance with equal weighting in most cases. And when we combine sentence length and inverse document frequency, we outperform generally all the uh, baselines as well as alternatives um, for both low, mid, and high resource languages. Um, but in general, we notice something. High resource languages are actually easier to align than mid resource languages and are easier to align than low resource languages. English to French has 85% recall. English to German has 77%. Uh, but of course, low resource languages like English to Mongolian has only 23%, which means there's a long way to go before we improve upon low resource document alignments. In conclusion, we show that multilingual sentence embeddings can be leveraged for massively multilingual document alignment. We show that constructing document representations and performing document alignment guided by this fixed representation similarity underperforms compared to decomposing each document into sentences and seeing how well the sentences aligned as guided by our cross-lingual sentence mover's distance. Uh, and if you want to check out the ground truth datasets, uh, they can be found in the following link. 
Thank you so much for your time.